Hello everyone, I'm Ashrish. I'm a software engineer based in New Delhi, India. I work at a fintech company called Bharat Pay and I also run a YouTube channel called India in Pixels in which I take government official data and make infographics and visualizations with it. I have a small community of people who look forward to these infographics and that is what keeps me going. So if you're someone who's interested in India or is interested in forming a community around data visualization, then I feel you will find this talk interesting. Now, disclaimer, English is not my native language, so please pardon me for the lack of articulation. Uh, but without much ado, let's go ahead. I want to start off by showing you this map that was made in the year 1825 by the educational reformer W.C. Woodbridge. He was an educational reformer, as I said, and a geographer, a pretty serious guy. And he classified the world into four groups, civilized, half-civilized, barbarians, and savages. Now, parts of Western Europe, North America, and Latin America were the lands of civilized people, and parts of Australia as well, while regions in Africa and Asia were considered to be barbarians, and uh, some other places were the lands of savages. India happened to be a land which was considered to be a land of half-civilized people. Uh, now, I find this map interesting because it shows you how racist even academic notions or, or academic institutions were 200 years ago. And I would like to believe that in 200 years we have moved ahead from this Anglo-centric worldview in which we do not classify people as barbarians or savages based on our own perspectives. But I think I have reasons to be disappointed. I have reasons to be disappointed with the way I feel my country and uh, parts of other non-Western nations are seen out in the world. Here is a map that I came across a couple of months back in the year 2020. It is a map of India, which shows you the population per square kilometer uh, that defecates out in the open. It is from the census 2011, and it shows a uh, various part of India in red, in shades of red, which tells you a lot of people out there in India defecate uh, in the open and uh, don't get me wrong it's factually correct uh, there is truth to this uh, but if you see the way it's received uh, it's filled with these racist comments making fun of uh, of the condition of India and it sort of reinforces the notion that India is indeed a land of half civilized people there's nothing wrong with discussing truth but when this is the only information out there, it is easy to see how data visualization, even if it's based on facts, can be a way to reinforce existing stereotypes. Now, this is another map that I found in an international subreddit about data visualization. It shows you the proportion of vegetarians by country in different parts of the world. What is interesting is that India comes out strongly as a vegetarian country. Right? And there is some truth to it, like 35% of Indians indeed are vegetarians. But what it does not tell you is the state-wise distribution of vegetarians in India itself. Here's an infographic that I made, taking the same data, but visualized in terms of different states or provinces. Here you see a clear demarcation in terms of diagonal gradients in the country, in which uh, the proportion of vegetarians is incredibly high in the northwest parts of India, and it goes down as you go towards southeast. And what this tells you is that uh, when looked as a whole, when looked as a monolith, India does appear to be a land of vegetarians. But what it does not take into account is the local sort of cultural diversity that exists in my country. I come from a region in which non-vegetarian cuisine is part of our culture. In fact, there are cultures in India in which beef is an integral part of the culture. And so when notions like this or data visualizations like this are the only visualizations that we have, then not only do people who are not from India form a wrong notion about my country, but my own people who might not have access to such granular visualization might have a wrong interpretation of their own nation. And they might feel like they do not belong to the larger Indian culture, which is totally false. 
We all know India is a populated country, 1.4 billion people. That's a lot of people. In some time, we'll be crossing China in terms of population very soon. Uh, but what really helps put this into perspective is to see how really large these states of India are. So this is a visualization I made in which I compared the population of Indian states with the population of different countries. And it shows you how much of uh, people India is really packing. So when you see something like this, like the only state of Uttar Pradesh has as many people as Pakistan does, or the state of Maharashtra has as many people as Japan does. So when you talk about uh, such a huge country in terms of a monolith, you're guaranteed to be wrong. And so this made me realize that it is important to talk about India in granularity if we want to be anywhere close to ground truth. Here's another map I made in which I compared the population of the single state of Uttar Pradesh versus the population of countries. All the countries that you see in blue have population lesser than the population of Uttar Pradesh. In fact, there are only four countries in the world with a population greater than that of Uttar Pradesh, one of which is India. So that tells you how incredibly populated India is and how incredibly dense this population is in certain parts of India. I'm sure that at this point, some of you must be thinking, why is this guy so obsessed with India? I'll tell you why. It's because my roots are spread all over this country. You see, I'm ethnically from the state of Uttar Pradesh, which I just mentioned, and my ancestors moved to the east of India, into the state of Orissa, uh, which is my native state. And because my dad was in the Indian Navy, uh, we had to move every two years and change my state. So I got to travel all of South India, the coastal states of India. And because of my work and because of different internships, I lived in the other states of India. And when I say a state of India, these are like different cultures altogether. Uh, each of these states have their own language, their own scripts their own food habits, uh, the climates are vastly different, the people look very different. So it's like all of your world changes every two years. So for me, it was a constant struggle of answering, where do you belong to? Or where is your home? It was one of the hardest questions for me to answer. And so ever since I was a kid, I was fascinated with the diversity that I was seeing around me. I wanted to express so much. I was confused. I didn't know where exactly did I belong to. Take for example these four photographs that I clicked in the places that I grew up in. I am sure this does not capture the diversity of, uh, of India, but it gives you a hint to how vastly different uh, the social fabrics of these states are. Here's a random Google search I did. And I put the first image that popped up of a person from a, a specific state. And all of these beautiful people, they're all Indians, but they look so vastly different. They look so different from each other. And it makes you think, how are they even part of the same country? It is questions like this that made me obsessed with India, essentially. In 2012, I got into IIT Kharagpur to study architecture for five years. It's a bit ironical that I'm not pursuing architecture anymore, but the mental models that I learned while studying architecture, I still use that in my daily life. Architecture taught me that a building is not just an engineering structure that supports different forces, but it is also a stage for human activities to take place. Similarly, in data visualization, the materials that I work with are numbers, are hardcore facts that are published through different studies. But the kind of effect that the data visualization should have is for the reader to gain an insight into the abstract qualitative nature of human psyche. I think that is the beautiful balance that I personally try to strike through my data visualizations and I attribute it wholly to architecture. After I graduated from IIT Kharagpur studying architecture, I got into MIT Media Lab as a one-year research intern. Now, 
I have to tell you, this was my dream institute. This was a place I felt I would finally fit in. Because you see, MIT Media Lab is this interdisciplinary research lab in which people from all different streams, say journalists, musicians, game developers, even neuroscientists, they would come together, they would work on projects and create cool stuff. And uh, I was so excited to be going there. And once I reached Boston and I spent one year there, it was an incredibly rewarding experience. First, I got to experience this whole different Western culture. It was also a learning experience because until then, I thought the West was this utopia of a place with no issues. And all the problems were with us non-Western nations who were struggling with our own problems. But I realized that was a wrong idea that even developed countries had their own sets of problems and uh, that in no way India is inherently disadvantaged. Uh, at MIT, I was also pursuing these innovative projects like augmented reality and brain-computer interfacing, but part of me still felt like my roots were still there in India. And uh, whenever I saw some flag of India or like some reference to India, I would click a snap. Uh, this picture, for example, is a map I drew from memory uh, during a Republic Day uh, competition which happened at MIT and I got the second prize. It was around then that I also saw that this established news organization uh, from India called Hindustan Times was also doing a lot of data visualization. And there were two people in particular, Gurman Bhatia and Harry Stevens, who were like at the forefront of these projects and I was following them and I saw Harry post saying they are looking for data visualization fellows to apply and work with them in Hindustan Times. I didn't think twice, I just applied all along and one month later I got to know that I was accepted and I was so incredibly happy. Now I knew this is what I want to do uh, when I go back to India and so that's what I did. I returned to India and I joined the Hindustan Times as a data visualization fellow. I was working in the newsroom, I was working with other journalists and I was looking at them, I was studying them, I was observing them uh, doing their craft. Coincidentally, around then, uh, there was also a case in the Supreme Court which was against the Section 377, a British era law which essentially made homosexuality a crime in India. I got to be one of the 20 petitioners from IITs and uh, I played a small role in repelling this law and uh, this is a click from the Supreme Court of India. I got to give a small interview in a TV show and a couple of my interviews also came up in newspapers and all of this for some reason really made me happy that I was beginning to contribute in a very small way to my country. Inspired and pumped up by this historical event, uh, I did a data visualization in which I tried to see how the thought leaders of India sort of reacted to this historic verdict. What I did is I scraped the data of the top 29 influencers from 13 different fields of India, so 377 in total, and I visualized these 13 different fields as networks highlighting those people of the network who commented or who tweeted about the verdict and uh, this got me a, a bit of traction and I realized that India was ready for data visualization that ideas like this were not esoteric and there were people who recognized the value of things like this. So the Hindustan Times experience and then this uh, data visualization project that I did all of this prepared me and made me confident to do data visualization independently. And therefore, somewhere in 2019, I decided to start making infographics. One of the first ones that I made was a direct inspiration, or sh I should say a direct copy of the French data visualizer. Pardon my French, I think it's W.E.B. Dubois. He had made this visualization way back in 1890, visualizing the city and rural population in the United States. So I adapted that to show the length of Indian roads by the type, say state highways or national highways, and I sort of created like this. Then linguistics is another part I'm really fascinated by. 
So I visualized the regions of India based on the language family that the language belongs to. I based on existing research of Anvita Abhi. Indian people's names have meanings and so do the names of the state. They all have their own etymology. And so I translated them to literal English. You know, these are the literal translations of the names of Indian states. And this gained some popularity because a lot of the people themselves didn't know like uh, so-and-so state means something. Some of the people said this reminds, this map reminds them of the uh, land in Game of Thrones with names like the Dawnlit Mountains or the Land of the Kings. I also charted the number of grammatical genders that exist in different Indian languages. So, for example, Hindi just has masculine and feminine. Languages like Marathi have masculine, feminine and neutral. Telugu, interestingly, has masculine and non-masculine. And Tamil has masculine, feminine, animate and inanimate genders. And Bengali and Odia don't have genders in the languages at all. Also, India's economy, how did the sectoral diversity go from 1985 to 2019? We see it like the financials expand, IT expand, while a shrinkage of... Uh, materials happen and uh, consumer discretionary things has also gone way down. This interestingly was also shared by one of the top economists in India. So that was a proud moment. I also dabbled a bit with geography. So for example, how would India look like if all the water was taken out? So it gives us a sort of a very interesting relief patterns this is obviously exaggerated for added effect but it shows how vast really the himalayas are and uh, how relatively plain this whole uttar pradesh belt is which is the most densely populated state of india then i took the pin codes pin codes is sort of like the indian equivalent of zip codes uh, the starting letter of every zip code of india i plotted them and i saw these patterns emerge so this was all uh, dealing with different data sets that I was coming across and finding a way to visualize them in a nice way. Uh, then I also did some fun visualizations showing the different corruption cases in India as uh, 2000 rupee notes stacked on top of each other and how would they compare against the Mount Everest. So this was a wacky idea I just had on top of my mind and I thought, uh, why not? Let's visualize it. A lot of this is templatized, so I do not design them in Photoshop. I have like one JavaScript code in which if I push data, then it can sort of procedurally generate. I use D3 uh, a lot in my uh, visualizations. But uh, after I get like a rough output from JavaScript, I add a layer of design to it on in Photoshop. So I think that gives you a, a span of the kind of quirky things I have been doing. And I'm really fortunate that there are other nerdy people like me who connect with uh, kind of stuff like this. I will end this with a few messages uh, that I got from people and thought I should document it. Um, Rishi, for example, here says, all my life I read about research articles centered around US and European countries. I'm so glad to learn about my own country's progression through Indian pixels, keep it up. So I think uh, in a world in which everyone has an opinion and everyone is trying to get you to see things from one perspective, data visualization can provide that neutral uh, sort of space in which people across perspectives can come look at data and see how it, interp how it translates to their own perspectives. And I think that is what Indian pixels has been able to create. Um, I get people in my community come from all different political backgrounds. Some are hardcore nationalists, some people are more capitalist in nature, some are more libertarian, some are hardcore communists, and yet still they can engage with the data because I think I do not taint it with my own personal biases, although there are ways in which they creep in still. Uh, yeah, so this is my experience. Uh, of making Indian pixels. I hope you found the talk interesting. Um, if you have any questions, be, please feel free to reach out to me. I would love to discuss and I would love to know what you thought about it. And um, yeah, so in conclusion, thank you so much for your time and uh, thank you for having me. See you.